Hey folks, Dave Couples here with you again. Uh, in this video, I want to answer the question, uh, does the King James Bible, and specifically Romans chapter 10, uh, does, it, does it teach the sinner's prayer? Does it teach the sinner's prayer? Uh, now, of course, when we're talking about the sinner's prayer, we're talking about the words uh, that ought to be spoken uh, when a lost person uh, is addressing the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, for their salvation. Now, of course, the Bible believer gets that uh, bit of information about church age salvation. He gets that from Romans chapter 10, verse 9 and 10, and Romans chapter 10 and verse 13. And, of course, that is the word of faith which the Apostle Paul preached. Uh, and so uh, the question is, is uh, what is exactly the words um, that are the sinner's prayer? What are the words that make up the sinner's prayer? And somebody might look at Romans chapter 10 and they might say to the Bible believer, uh, they might say, well, it does not say uh, that there's a sinner's prayer there in Romans chapter 10. It does not say there in Romans chapter 10 uh, that you need to say a certain set of words in order to be saved. Uh, or it is not clear what the certain words are that need to be said or that ought to be said in order for one to be saved uh, in the church age today. It is not clear. And of course, that's true. Uh, Romans chapter 10, it talks about a confession with the mouth of the Lord Jesus. Uh, in Romans chapter 10 and verse 13, it talks about calling upon the name of the Lord in order to be saved. Uh, and so, you know, the way the Bible believer would answer uh, that question, it's a good question. Uh, it might not come from somebody... Uh, that is an anti-Romans 10 uh, proponent. It could just be an honest question uh, that even a Bible believer uh, might have. It's a good question. Uh, but the question can be answered uh, when you just compare Scripture uh, with Scripture. Of course, that is uh, the way to interpret uh, the Word of God is by comparing all Scripture with all Scripture uh, before you uh, begin to make uh, any sort of a doctrinal statement uh, about a particular subject. Of course, you get that in Isaiah chapter 28, uh, down there around verse 9 and 10. Where he talks about precept must be upon precept, line upon line, here a little uh, and there a little. And so that's the idea, uh, is that you don't want to just uh, uh, stay uh, in one particular place in the Word of God to get the full and accurate uh, picture uh, or presentation of a particular subject that the Word of God is talking about. And so uh, such is the case with salvation, church age salvation in particular. Uh, and this is uh, the way the Bible believer uh, will come away with the concept uh, of the sinner's prayer. Uh, they don't do it just by staying in Romans chapter 10, but they do it by going into other places as well uh, and learning uh, about the full, uh, accurate uh, presentation uh, about the subject that is church age salvation. And so what I mean by all that uh, is in order to uh, get the words that should be said, uh, and of course something does need to be said, that is clear in Romans chapter 10, uh, people might say, well, it's not clear what the words are that need to be said, but what most certainly is clear in Romans chapter 10 is something needs to be said. Uh, a confession with the mouth is what Romans chapter 10, verse 9 and 10 say. Uh, and Romans chapter 10 and verse 13 says, for whosoever shall call uh, upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And so what most certainly is clear is something uh, ought to be said with the mouth uh, by the person that wants to be saved in the church age today. And somebody might raise the question of, well, what about people that cannot speak? What about mute people? Uh, and, you know, the Bible believer, uh, he should have something to say about that uh, kind of a question. Uh, what I might say about that kind of an exception to the rule, what about a person that genuinely uh, is handicapped and they cannot speak with their mouth? Uh, I might take them over to 1 Samuel chapter 1 where it talks about Hannah. And it says, Hannah spoke in her heart, but her lips moved. Uh, and so the Lord knows everybody, uh, and the Lord made everybody. He knows that some people are handicapped, and they cannot speak uh, with their mouth, and he'll, he'll, He will deal with them accordingly. Uh, but for the rest of us that can speak, uh, the Word of God is very clear. Uh, it does mention a confession with the mouth, and it does mention uh, a calling upon the name of the Lord in order to be saved. That is what Romans chapter 10 says. And anybody that says anything to the contrary uh, is simply private interpretation, uh, and they are just borrowing a page from the Roman Catholic Church's playbook. Of course, if you want to know a, a, a good biblical example of somebody uh, calling upon the name of the Lord, that that includes spoken words with one's mouth, if you want to know a good biblical example of that, you can go over to a famous chapter in the Word of God. And, of course, that's going to be 1 Kings chapter 18. And, of course, 1 Kings chapter 18, you have a, a sort of a showdown with Elijah, uh, and he's facing off against the false prophets of Baal. And you come down through 1 Kings chapter 18, right around verse 24, 25, 26, and Elijah, uh, he tells the false prophets of Baal, 
He says, you call on the name of your God, you call on Baal, uh, and I will call on the name of the Lord God of Israel. And the God that answers by fire, uh, he's going to be the true and the living God. And of course, you read on down through 1 Kings chapter 18, and what you see is a very good, clear, crystal clear example of what the Bible uh, defines as calling uh, upon God. Uh, and the false prophets of Baal, uh, they call upon their god Baal, and they say words. That's what it says in 1 Kings 18, as you read on down there. Uh, it's, you know, they say, hear us, hear us, O Baal. O Baal, hear us, hear us, O Baal. Uh, and of course, Baal does not answer them, uh, because Baal is a, a, a figment of somebody's imagination. Uh, and Elijah, uh, I think it says around noon, noonday, uh, somewhere around there, Elijah interrupts them, he stops them, and he says, maybe you guys need to cry louder. Uh, in other words, calling upon Baal or calling upon a god in, involves uh, using your mouth and saying words that uh, are audible spoken words. And Elijah says to those false prophets, he says, cry louder. Maybe he can't hear you. Uh, and of course, uh, nothing happens during that uh, Baal service uh, because, again, Baal is a, a figment of somebody's imagination. Baal is a false god. Uh, and then, of course, it, it comes to be Elijah's turn. Uh, you, know, you guys know how the story goes, I'm sure. Uh, Elijah uh, calls upon the name of the Lord God of Israel, uh, and he says and he says words. That's what he says. You can read on down there through 1 Kings chapter 18, and you find out that Elijah says words unto God Almighty. Uh, and, of course, uh, God Almighty uh, answers, answers by fire. And so what you have there in 1 Kings chapter 18 are uh, very crystal clear examples uh, of what the King James Bible defines as calling upon the name of God. It is talking about spoken words one says with their mouth. And so what is clear back in Romans chapter 10 uh, is uh, that what you need to do uh, is to say spoken words with your mouth. That is, that is very clear. But what somebody might uh, say, they might have a genuine question, whether it's an anti-Romans uh, 10 proponent or it's a Bible believer, it's just a skeptic in general, uh, somebody might have a, a genuine question about it. Say they say, "Well, um, uh, you know, th they'll say, well, 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 what are the words that need to be said?" And while it's not clear in Romans chapter ten what the words are that need to be said, uh, what is clear again uh, is that something needs to be said unto the Lord, unto the Savior. And something else that is clear, and this might be uh, where the uh, Bible believer gets the idea. Uh, about a sinner's prayer is they'll come over and learn a little bit more about the nature of church age salvation uh, and so what I would do uh, about you know determining a specific set of words uh, to say according to Romans chapter 10 is I'd bring somebody to Ephesians chapter 1 and what is clear uh, well it's not clear what the specific words are that need to be said what is clear is after you say those specific words uh, you are saved you are sealed with the Holy Spirit of God unto the day of redemption of course, you're going to get that in Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 13. And it says, after you believed in Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 13, you were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise. And of course, in Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 13, when it says, after you believed, uh, that must be reconciled uh, with Romans chapter 10, which, which also uh, talks about church age salvation. Uh, and that uh, word of faith, Romans chapter 10 and verse 8, not just includes uh, a faith or a belief in the heart, but also, uh, again, a confession with the mouth and a calling upon the name of the Lord uh, in order to be saved. And so, uh, in Ephesians chapter 1, what is clear is after you believe, in verse 13, you are sealed with the Holy Spirit of God. And of course, you run over to Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 30, and you find out that once you are sealed with the Holy Spirit of God, you are sealed unto the day of redemption. And so the idea is once you call upon the name of the Lord in order to be saved, Romans chapter 10 and verse 13, uh, once you do that, you are sealed with the Holy Spirit of God uh, unto, unto the day of redemption. Not until the day of redemption, but unto the day of redemption. And of course, the idea is when in Romans chapter 10 and verse 13, when it says, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved, the idea is you're saved. Uh, the Bible believer uh, believes that when it says saved, it literally means saved. And so that's what you get when you compare it with Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 13 and Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 30. That after you believe, after you call upon the name of the Lord in order to be saved, Scripture with Scripture, uh, you are sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise unto, uh, unto the day of redemption. And so when you get saved, you literally get saved. Amen. The Savior saves. 
Uh, he's not a part-time savior. He's not bad at his job. He's very good at it. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Uh, so that is clear. That is clear. What is not clear is the specific set of words that ought to be said unto the Savior in Romans chapter 10. But what is clear is that once those specific words are spoken, uh, you are saved. That is very clear. And so what I might ask somebody that might raise that question uh, is I might ask them is, can you think of a better set of words to say than to say the words um, that that accomplish what the thing is that is being accomplished when you meet the Savior there uh, and call upon Him for salvation. Uh, in other words, if what is clear is that when you call upon the name of the Lord, if what is clear is you are saved, can you think of a better set of words to say uh, to the Savior than, uh, you know, the idea, uh, the basic concept of a sinner's prayer? And so, of course, it might go something like, uh, Lord Jesus, uh, I know you died on the cross, you were buried, and you rose again the third day. Uh, I know you're the Savior, and I cannot save myself. I don't want to go to hell for all eternity. Uh, I want to go to heaven. So, Lord, I'm coming to you the only way I know how. Uh, please save me, Lord. Save me from hell and take me to heaven. Uh, it could be something along those lines. Again, uh, there is no specific exact uh, set of words that are required uh, that the King James Bible uh, requires, that the Holy Spirit requires. But something along the lines of what the uh, quote-unquote sinner's prayer uh, does is a great place to start. Amen. If, if it's not clear what the words are that need to be said, but it is clear that there are words that need to be said according to Romans chapter 10, uh, and it is clear that what happens when you say those words and you believe those words in your heart, again, Romans chapter 10, if what is clear is you are saved from that point forward after you uh, do business with the Savior, if that's clear, uh, can you think of a better set of words to say than to say the thing uh, that it does when you say those words to the Savior? And so that is where uh, the Bible believer gets the idea, gets the concept of the sinner's prayer uh, in Romans chapter 10. Uh, so I just, I, I just wanted to answer that question here in this video. That's where we get the idea of the general uh, words to say that ought to be spoken when spoken uh, to the Lord. That is that old-fashioned, uh, old-time, church-age salvation sinner's prayer. Uh, so I thank you for watching, and we'll catch you the next time. The good Lord willing. God bless.